It was unknown when a cultivation world that was called a game suddenly appeared. Players entered the cultivation world to battle against monsters and raise their abilities, and at the same time, they could take the items and the cultivation they earned into the real world. Until one day, disaster came upon them as countless monsters arrived in the real world from the cultivation world and many portals appeared in the sky of the human metropolis. Ever since the monsters invaded the real world, the war between humans and monsters has become endless. Cities fell in succession, and they were in ruins. Huge monsters went on a rampage, and they toppled down and destroyed the buildings like they were nothing. The few remaining survivors were still bitterly defending the very last city, and they continued to fight even though they looked helpless as they got surrounded by huge monsters. As they continued to fight, one of them observed that the city is about to collapse, and if that continues, the human race is doomed. Suddenly, a huge hand appeared from the sky, and one of the players couldn't help but ask what it was. It was the final demon lord, and it was so huge that the tall buildings looked so small in comparison. As they continued to fight, one of the players announced that the final demon lord had appeared and there were too many monsters. The sword immortal, Gu Qingxin, declared that at that moment, there was only one move left, return together. Gu Qingxin disclosed that that move could kill that demon god. One of the players cautioned that Gu Qingxin shouldn't do it because if he uses return together, he will also die, and he is the last hope of the human race. But Gu Qingxin jumped off the ground. He moved past a monster, and as he continued to charge forward, he insisted that they don't have any other options, as only that sword could cut apart that karma. Gu Qingxin charged towards the final demon lord with his swords. One of the remaining players suggested that Gu Qingxin should let them use all of their remaining spirit power to support him, and another one proposed that everything is up to Gu Qingxin. Gu Qingxin looked so determined as he charged forward, and he vowed that he would let all of the wars and suffering from that point on completely end. He gathered his spiritual powers, and he pushed forward along with the spiritual powers of the remaining players that supported him. The final demon lord roared ferociously, and the gathered spiritual powers of Gu Qingxin and the players looked so small as they lunged towards the demon lord's mouth. The two powerful forces collided, which created a huge explosion that affected the entire city. And after that battle, the last immortal of the human race fell and the relentless war between humans and demons ended in the defeat of the human race. The present world started to enter into a state of destruction, and player Gu Qingxin, who killed the final demon lord, earned himself a chance at resurrection. Somewhere in the forest, two people were checking out a pit filled with dead people, and one of them inquired of the other, who was their leader, why they were coming to that pit late in the night and what if they met monsters. But the leader clarified that he should come over and check if there were any fish that slipped through the net. The leader mentioned that dead people have lots of good things in them, and as he elaborated that he would show him, the subordinate inquired if he needed to stab the corpses another time. Suddenly, they noticed a golden sword shining in the midst of the pile of dead bodies. The leader jumped into the pit, and he remarked that the short sword didn't look common. He looked so menacing as he raised his sword, and he remarked that he would have another stab before taking it. But suddenly, someone opened their eyes. The leader was astonished when a man suddenly rose from the pit, grabbed the short sword, and blocked his attack with it, causing his sword to fly up in the air. The person's expression looked so grim as he stood there with the golden short sword in his hand. He suddenly lunged towards the leader, which caught the leader off guard. As the leader fell to the ground, the subordinate called the man a monster and asserted that he had killed the leader. It was Gu Qingxin, and he asked where that place was and who they were, and he mentioned that he clearly perished with the demon lord earlier. Suddenly, Gu Qingxin was alarmed when the leader started twitching. The leader's hand transformed, and it suddenly reached out to Gu Qingxin. Gu Qingxin was taken by surprise as the leader pushed him by the chest. He fell to the ground, and as the leader climbed on top of him and began choking him, he observed that the leader had such huge strength. The leader had completely transformed into a monster, and its eyes were glowing sinisterly. Gu Qingxin was trying to grab a bone behind him, and as he declared that it was not so easy to kill him, the leader screamed. Gu Qingxin managed to grab the bone, and he immediately stabbed it on the leader's side. The leader screamed in pain, and he quickly jumped away from Gu Qingxin. Gu Qingxin was coughing as he grabbed the short sword, and he remarked that it was really dangerous. He lunged forward, and he exclaimed that the leader had really angered him at that moment. Gu Qingxin looked so menacing as he raised his sword and jumped over the leader. He plunged his sword into the leader's head, and instead of blood, dark liquid splattered all over the place. The leader's eyes turned completely white, and he fell to the ground after Gu Qingxin pulled out his sword. 
Bu Qingxian asked what the battlefield and the person that rose from the dead were, if it meant that the place was not the present world but the cultivation world inside the game, and as he asked where the system was, he began calling for it. But Gu Qingxian fell quiet as no system answered his call. Looking up at the dark sky, Gu Qingxian commented that it was strange, and he wondered why there was no response from the system. Suddenly, the subordinate, who looked so scared of Gu Qingxian, asked what the meaning of that was and if Gu Qingxian was a human or a ghost. Gu Qingxian replied that if the subordinate killed thousands of monsters, he wouldn't ask that kind of dumb question. The subordinate asked Gu Qingxian who he was and inquired that he should let him see the badge on his waist. Gu Qingxian was puzzled when he heard about the badge, so he took a look at the thing that was hanging on his waist. It was written on the badge that he was Gu Qingxian of the Xiaoki camp, and when Gu Qingxian saw that, he remarked that the badge was from the game Cultivation World and that it was a previous design. When the subordinate saw Gu Qingxian's badge, he explained that it was a misunderstanding because he was a brother from the Xiaoki camp. The subordinate urged that Gu Qingxian should follow him to the camp quickly because it was way too dangerous there, but Gu Qingxian suddenly looked behind him and noticed something. He noticed the hair tie of the leader he just defeated, and as he went to grab it, he observed that, looking closer at those people's armor, they were all leather armor that was in style ten years ago. Gu Qingxian wore the hair tie he took, and while calling the subordinate bro, he inquired what year it was. The subordinate replied that it was the 681st year of Yangping, and Gu Qingxian was startled. Gu Qingxian looked so surprised when he heard that it was the 681st year of Yangping. He realized that it was the game cultivation world from 10 years ago. Suddenly, a system appeared, and it informed Gu Qingxian that the present time was confirmed to be the last year of Yangping, that the time flow was stabilized, so it was confirmed to be detached from the space-time continuum, and the result was that they successfully escaped from the apocalypse. The system advised Gu Qingxian that his identity was reset successfully with his current identity as the vanguard army soldier Gu Qingxian of Xiaoki camp of the human race, and while Gu Qingxian was still astonished by what he read, the system affirmed his identity. Gu Qingxian was stupefied, and he just stood there while he processed the huge amount of information he just received. The system declared Gu Qingxian that the activation of the War God system was successful, so it would immediately restart the path of adventure, and as a powerful energy shrouded Gu Qingxian and raised him off the ground, Gu Qingxian just realized that he was reborn. Gu Qingxian inspected himself as he asked about the War God system. He was just standing there, and he was in awe as he continued to inspect himself. Suddenly, Gu Qingxian noticed something. A huge wolf-like monster was charging towards them, and when the subordinate saw that, he exclaimed that they were all doomed. Gu Qingxian grabbed a sword, and as he prepared himself to fight with the monster, he reassured the subordinate that he shouldn't worry because it was only a normal monster. But as he lunged towards the monster, Gu Qingxian was surprised as the monster broke his sword with just a swing of its claws. Gu Qingxian was blown away due to the impact, and he observed that his sword skills couldn't be used. The monster ran towards Gu Qingxian to attack again, and Gu Qingxian realized that there was definitely no chance of winning with just straightforward attacks, so he could only depend on his experience. As the monster lunged at him, Gu Qingxian thrust his sword at the monster, and he recalled that their vital point was their throat. Gu Qingxian slashed his sword along the monster's body as he moved past it. As Gu Qingxian finished his attack and swung his sword to his side, the monster was cut in half. The monster's carcass lay on the ground, and Gu Qingxian noted that the place looked like fallen human territory. Looking ahead, Gu Qingxian noticed that there were more gleaming eyes in the distance, and he observed that there were already monsters gradually coming there as they were attracted to the smell of blood from the pit of dead people. One of the monsters emerged from the shadows, and it was already drooling while it bared its teeth. Gu Qingxian remarked that the number of monsters that came at that time was even greater, and it was difficult to just kill one monster. But currently there is a whole herd, so there was no way he could deal with them. He quickly ran away from the monsters towards the subordinate, and as Gu Qingxian asked him if there were any hiding places nearby, the subordinate mentioned that there were barracks with a concealment magic formation not far up ahead. The monsters chased after Gu Qingxian and the subordinate. As they continued to run with all their might, the subordinate suddenly announced that they had arrived at the barracks. While Gu Qingxian was looking back at the monsters, the subordinate ran through a portal and he urged Gu Qingxian to come in quickly. The two of them suddenly disappeared from the forest, and the monsters all looked so confused as they tried to look for them. A camp was being protected by a barrier, and it was isolated from the outside. There was a torch illuminating the place, and weapons were neatly stored, and someone confirmed that the camp there is very safe. It was the subordinate, and while out of breath, 
He assured that the camp has a concealment magic formation, so those monsters can't discover it. Gu Kingshin reported that when they came inside the camp, he felt a tremor in the magic formation, so he was afraid that it couldn't hold on for long. The subordinate was alarmed, so he inquired of Gu Kingshin what they should do, and Gu Kingshin proposed that if there are spirit stones, they can hold out for a longer period of time. The subordinate quickly ran and promised that he would go check if there were any extra spirit stones in the camp. Gu Kingshin closed his eyes, and he reflected that he clearly perished together with the final demon lord just a moment ago, but he realized that it was not a moment ago. It should be his previous life. He recollected that in his previous life, people originally claimed that the cultivation world was a virtual game, and only until the monsters invaded the present world did they know that the cultivation world was real and truly existed. But it was too late by then, and the outcome of the monsters destroying the human race was already finalized. Gu Kingshin remarked that at the moment, the fact that he was reborn into the cultivation world ten years into the past meant that he still had a chance to stop the annihilation of the human race, but currently, he needed to find a way to survive. While inspecting a weapon, Gu Kingshin commented that when he was killing the monster, his sword skills couldn't be used, and it couldn't continue to be like that in the long run. Gu Kingshin suddenly remembered the War God system earlier. He was surprised when the system screen suddenly appeared in front of him. The system showed Gu Kingshin his details. It stated that soul power could be obtained through killing living organisms, and the higher the cultivation, the higher the maximum amount of soul power needed to be obtained. It showed Gu Kingshin that he has killed two monsters, which made him obtain four points of soul power, and he observed that it was completely different from the system of the game in the previous life, but he noted that he should forget it as it was not important because what is important at that moment is to find a way to survive. When Gu Kingshin saw that his current cultivation level was the first stage of Kai condensation, he explained that it was no wonder he felt so weak as he could only feel and use spirit power at the lowest degree. The system notified Gu Kingshin that the War God operation screen was successfully activated, and as it asked Gu Kingshin if he would wish to activate the first function, Gu Kingshin instructed to activate. The system notified Gu Kingshin that it had activated the War God skill function, which could directly comprehend the moves of the previous holders of the weapon by physically touching it, and comprehension of the moves requires spending a certain amount of soul power. When Gu Kingshin saw that he could unlock skills by picking up weapons, he mused that it was too bad that there was no sword, and he grabbed a scimitar. The system immediately notified Gu Kingshin that the military standard scimitar once performed the following skills. First, the horizontally sweeping a thousand soldiers, which cost one PT of soul power. And second, the opening the door to see the mountain, which cost one PT of soul power. Gu Kingshin admitted that it was difficult to fight just one monster before, so it was going to be suicide to fight close combat with a group of them. He grabbed a bow and resolved that he should rely on ranged attacks to kill the monsters and raise his cultivation level first. The system notified Gu Kingshin that the military standard bow once performed the following skills. First, stabilize, which costs 2 PTS of soul power. Second, consecutive shooting, which costs 2 PTS of soul power. Third, precise, which costs 4 PTS of soul power. And fourth, two shallows fly together, which costs 6 PTS of soul power. When Gu Kingshin saw the skills, he concluded that the move two shallows fly together seems to be very powerful. But the amount of soul power needed to be spent exceeds his max limit, so he will choose to comprehend stabilize and consecutive shooting. Gu Kingshin was startled when a powerful energy suddenly surged towards him from the system. He grabbed an arrow and confirmed that the bow skills he learned were actually instantly comprehended. As he aimed the arrow, Gu Kingshin declared that he would see what actual combat was like. Gu Kingshin managed to hit the target with three consecutive arrows. He grabbed another arrow and advised that the accuracy is okay, but it lacks power. Gu Kingshin aimed the arrow once again, and he asked if it would be more powerful if he added spirit power. He released consecutive arrows that were imbued with spiritual power. The arrow was so powerful that it pierced through the target and destroyed it. The three targets in front were all smoking and were destroyed when the arrows were gone. Gu Kingshin remarked that it looked like it should be possible to rely on the abilities of the War God system to kill those low-tier monsters, and he would slowly figure out what it was all about afterward. Suddenly, the ground shook, which made Gu Kingshin ask what it was and if it was an earthquake. Gu Kingshin realized that it was not an earthquake, and he observed that the sound was coming from outside of the barracks. He quickly ran towards the entrance, and he seemed to have recognized what he saw. A huge monster with long, luscious hair that doesn't have a face was walking towards the barracks, and Gu Kingshin yelled and exclaimed that it was the faceless giant. 
the huge monster was about to reach the barrier, and Gu Qingxin was so surprised when he recognized that it was the faceless giant. Gu Qingxin remarked that the first time that type of monster appeared was during the year players first entered the cultivation world, so he wondered why it would appear at that moment. He asked if something different from the previous timeline had occurred. Suddenly, the subordinate came back, and when he saw the faceless giant, he asked what that monster was, and Gu Qingxin explained that it was a monster of the nascent soul stage, the faceless giant. The faceless giant continued to walk forward, and the subordinate mentioned that it was coming over. The faceless giant had almost reached the barrier, which made the subordinate panic, and as he dropped the spirit stones, he exclaimed that they were done for and that they were going to die for sure that time. All the foot of the faceless giant was directly above the barrier and it was about to step on them. Gu Qingxin advised that the subordinate shouldn't panic as they wouldn't die. The two of them saw that the faceless giant's foot landed on the other side of the barrier and it missed them. Gu Qingxin let out a sigh of relief and he noted that, as expected, it wasn't coming after them. But the subordinate saw that the magic formation was damaged and there was a crack in the barrier, so he asked Gu Qingxin what the matter was with that. Gu Qingxin observed that it looked like the tremor earlier depleted the concealment formation's spirit power, and glowing, menacing eyes were looking at them from a distance while the subordinate started picking up the spirit stones he dropped on the ground. Gu Qingxin noticed the monsters drooling and growling at them, ready to pounce, so he disclosed that their location was exposed and monsters were being attracted over there. As the monsters started to run towards them, Gu Qingxin quickly grabbed an arrow, and he declared that if that goes on, more and more monsters will come, so he will first get rid of those guys. Gu Qingxin fired the arrow at the monsters, and he instructed that the subordinate should quickly go and charge up the formation with the spirit stones, and the subordinate acknowledged that he got it. As Gu Qingxin released a powerful arrow, the system notified him that he was using the skill Stabilize. The monster's head tilted back when the powerful arrow hit it directly in the throat. Gu Qingxin was exuding powerful energy, and he asserted that ranged attacks are pretty suitable to deal with those monsters. More monsters were charging forward aggressively when the system notified Gu Qingxin that he was using the skill, consecutive shooting. Powerful arrows rained down on the monsters, and they all screamed in pain. The system notified Gu Qingxin that his experience bar was filled, so his strength was raised to the second stage of kin condensation and the skill Stabilize had a successful breakthrough, so it has leveled up to secure, and when Gu Qingxin saw that, he reflected that growth-type skills are suitable for his current situation as he could slowly level up that way. But Gu Qingxin indicated that the most worrisome thing at the moment is why a monster like the Faceless Giant would appear. Suddenly, the subordinate came back, and he reported that he finished arranging the Spirit Stone so the concealment formation should last for a while. But Gu Qingxin voiced that he was afraid that it was not so simple. The subordinate asked Gu Qingxin what he was worried about when the Faceless Giant left, and Gu Qingxin speculated that the Faceless Giant won't appear alone, so there is a high chance that there will be high-tier soldiers following it. Gu Qingxin warned that the Concealment Formation can't block high-tier monsters, and the Faceless Giant earlier should have discovered them but was indifferent to attacking them. As the Faceless Giant continued to move forward, Gu Qingxin confessed that he kept feeling like something big was about to happen. A few hours passed, and the sun was already up in the sky. Gu Qingxin noticed a huge group of monsters traveling in the distance. He was standing on the barracks watchtower, and he remarked that they had come. Gu Qingxin commented that it was the steel blood demon and the evil ghost fire snake. But the monsters made a turn to avoid the barracks. The evil ghost fire snake followed them, and they left a trail of fiery liquid on the ground. Gu Qingxin observed that it looked like they were in a hurry to go somewhere, and they looked like they were traveling in the same direction as the faceless giant. He quickly ran towards the edge of the watchtower and was about to jump towards the ground, where the subordinate was. Gu Qingxin landed in front of the subordinate, and he questioned himself where exactly all those high-tier monsters were going. Suddenly, the subordinate pointed up and exclaimed that they should quickly look at the sky, which startled Gu Qingxin. Something crashed in front of them, and the subordinate inquired what that thing was. It talked and repeatedly declared that it was so tired, but it had almost caught up. Gu Qingxin and the subordinate examined it, and the subordinate observed that it looked like a bird. Suddenly, the bird panicked when it saw them, and it kept announcing humans. The bird quickly flew away from them, and as the subordinate noted that it was going to escape, the bird repeatedly announced that they were humans, so it should quickly run. Gu Qingxin immediately grabbed an arrow, and while the bird was zooming in the sky, he stated that he couldn't let that kind of intelligent type monster run away. Gu Qingxin jumped off the ground, 
He aimed the arrow at the bird, and the system notified him that he was using the skill, Secure. Gu Qingxin released the arrow, and it hit the bird at an incredible speed. The arrow pierced through the bird's chest, and while it was pinned on a tree trunk, Gu Qingxin landed in front of it, and the system notified him that his soul power had increased by two points and his current soul power was three-fifth. Gu Qingxin noticed a shiny gem hanging by the bird's neck, and as he reached out to it and inquired what it was, it made a static sound. Holding the pendant in his hand, it announced that the target was continuing to move towards the south, and was commanding the faceless giant and the blood-drinking army to attack with full force. And when Gu Qingxin heard that, he realized that it was the demonic army's secret dispatch command. So that strange bird was a messenger, and he questioned himself if the demonic army wanted to start a war. Looking intently at the pendant, Gu Qingxin mentioned that it was not right because he remembered every battle of the cultivation world and there weren't any battles between the human race and the monsters in the early days. Gu Qingxin reflected that it was not a battle but that it mobilized that kind of army, so he questioned himself if they were going for a decapitation strike to get rid of the leader, and he pondered which people in history were killed through a sneak attack by monsters. The subordinate was startled when Gu Qingxin suddenly turned towards him and asked what day it was that day, to which he quickly answered that it was June 7th and asked what it was. When he heard that it was June 7th, Gu Qingxin remarked that he remembered remembered that the deaths of the two top-tier cultivators, the sacred sect Supreme Elder, Grand Master of Formations, Gong Sunjai, and the celestial sect Holy Celestial Maiden, Ning Yuichen, should have happened in the following few days. Gu Qingxin gritted his teeth as he declared that their strength was top-tier, and if they didn't die, the human race may not have been obliterated by the apocalypse. He was troubled as he stated that with his current cultivation, it was probably going to be difficult to even get near those monsters, and it was not only the apocalypse, but he also wanted to change many other things. Suddenly, Gu Qingxin heard the system notification. The system notified Gu Qingxin that he had stayed up to 24 hours in that world, so he was returning to the present world, and when Gu Qingxin saw that, he was so surprised. The system notified Gu Qingxin that all equipment had been stored inside the system's inventory, and could be taken out when needed. The system notified Gu Qingxin that it was initiating the return, and Gu Qingxin was surprised. Gu Qingxin saw that his body started to disappear, and he expressed that he was going back. At the Free Federation Changing Federation, a lot of spacecraft were flying in the night sky. Gu Qingxin was transported to a hall full of people. It seemed to be a party, and nobody seemed to notice that Gu Qingxin was appearing out of nowhere in the midst of them all. Gu Qingxin was astonished when he realized that it was his high school prom. He was stupefied, as he remarked that he had returned to the world before its destruction. Suddenly, someone called Gu Qingxin. A girl called Gu Qingxin, and he seemed to have recognized the voice as Zhu Er, so he turned around. It was Gu Qingxin's high school classmate, Ninth Prefecture Noble, and Su family's eldest granddaughter, Su Zuer, and as she mentioned that Gu Qingxin's good bro, Zhang Yi, mentioned that Gu Qingxin had something to tell her, she asked Gu Qingxin if that was right. Zhang Yi, Gu Qingxin's high school friend, chimed in, and he laughed as he confirmed that it was right that Gu Qingxin had a very important thing to tell Su Zuer. Upon hearing what was happening, one of the students asked if it was that Gu Qingxin wanted to confess to Su Zuer, and as another suggested that there was no way, another one proclaimed that it was going to be a good show. Gu Qingxin glared at Zhang Yi. He recalled that in his previous life, Zhang Yi stabbed him with a ring containing aphrodisiac poison when he was confessing, causing him to do perverted things to Su Zuer. Su Zuer slapped Gu Qingxin across the face, and because Gu Qingxin offended the Su family, there was no place for him to gain a foothold in the Free Federation. Left with no choice, Gu Qingxin went to the Fuxi Empire, and only when the cultivation world and the present world connected did he have a chance to turn it around. Recalling how he was cast off, Gu Qingxin asserted that in that life, he won't repeat the same mistakes. Zhang Yi coaxed Gu Qingxin, and he advised that he shouldn't be afraid, so he should say what he wanted to say. Gu Qingxin called Su Zuer, and he expressed that he wanted to tell her something. Everyone watched in anticipation, and one of the students announced that they should come look as the show was starting. Gu Qingxin stated that he only wanted to say that when Su Zuer has time, she should come over to his house to eat a meal so she could taste his cooking skills. And when they heard that, everyone was disappointed and commented that it was boring, while Zhang Yi was surprised. When Su Zuer heard that it was to eat a meal, she asked him if it was only to eat a meal and nothing else, to which Gu Qingxin replied yes. Zhang Yi chimed in again, and he asked Gu Qingxin if he didn't declare that he wanted to confess to Su Zuer, but Gu Qingxin asserted that he shouldn't be joking because he never claimed anything like that. 
Jiang Yi's expression turned grim as he asserted that it was different from his plans, so it was time to get real serious, and he announced that Gu Qingxian was dripping the chain at the critical moment, so he should let him, his good bro, help him out. Jiang Yi was about to grab Gu Qingxian while wearing the ring in his hand, but Gu Qingxian looked prepared as he was glaring at him. Gu Qingxian quickly grabbed Jiang Yi's hand, and as Jiang Yi asked him what it was, he responded that he should ask him that question. Gu Qingxian swung his arm violently. He flung Jiang Yi into the floor, and Jiang Yi forcefully crashed with a loud thud. Gu Qingxian took the ring from Jiang Yi's hand, and he asked him what he wanted to use it for. Jiang Yi panicked, and he pleaded that Gu Qingxian shouldn't misunderstand because it was only a normal ring. Gu Qingxian remarked that in his previous life, he didn't know who wanted to harm him, but in that life, he might be able to use the Su family guards to help him. He asked Jiang Yi if he was not confessing, and after he declared that he shouldn't blame him for being harsh, he called someone named Su Yi. Su Zuer was surprised when her old bodyguard, Old Lai, and her bodyguard, Su Yi, came, and Su Yi mentioned that she remembered telling Gu Qingxian that he could only call her when Su Zuer was in danger. Gu Qingxian showed the ring with a spike on it to Su Yi, and he requested that she look at it first. Su Yi was alarmed when she inspected the ring. Noticing her reaction, Old Lai inquired Su Yi what it was, and Su Yi revealed that there is a very violent aphrodisiac on that ring. Su Zuer was astonished when she heard about the aphrodisiac. Gu Qingxian stated that although he didn't know the reason, there was one thing that could be verified, and that is that there was someone who wanted Su Zuer and him to be humiliated, and as for who that person is, he would trouble both of the bodyguards to ask. Jiang Yi was in a panic, and he was frantically trying to run away. Old Lai expressed his annoyance when he saw what Jiang Yi was doing. He suddenly disappeared from where he was standing. Jiang Yi was startled when Old Lai suddenly appeared in front of him. Old Lai was exuding a strong, dark aura, and he asserted that Jiang Yi should come over because life is hard, so he should enter a sweet, dark dream. He placed his hand over Jiang Yi's head and proposed that as long as he spoke the secret in his heart, he could satisfy his desires, and Jiang Yi, who looked like he was under a spell, confessed that he would tell Old Lai right away. Gu Qingxian was astonished when he saw that, and as he queried if it was a Sky Select ability, Su Zuer confirmed that it was right and that old lie is a Sky Select, a professional who has unique abilities in the present world and cannot rely on cultivation to awaken an ability, and has a Sky Select ability that hypnotizes people. Old Lai was using his ability on Jiang Yi, and as he urged him to speak on who wanted to harm Su Zuer, Jiang Yi admitted that he didn't know because the other person used an anonymous online account and he was only taking the money to do business. Gu Qingxian announced that someone was instructing Jiang Yi. Old Lai left Jiang Yi, who was gasping for air, and he noted that Jiang Yi doesn't know anything. Jiang Yi pleaded with Gu Qingxian and implored, taking into account the many years of their friendship. He requested that he spare him. He was kneeling in front of Gu Qingxian as he begged that he should spare him, and Gu Qingxian was looking at him with a grim expression on his face. Gu Qingxian kicked Jiang Yi, and he voiced that he believed that it was time for their friendship to meet the ghosts. As Jiang Yi crashed on the ground, Gu Qingxian turned to Su Yi and requested that she continue to investigate the person behind that incident, and Su Yi responded that he didn't need to tell her that. Su Zuer thanked Gu Qingxian for protecting her reputation. But Gu Qingxian insisted that there was no need to thank him because he was also doing it for himself. Su Zuer was looking intently at Gu Qingxian, and she remarked that it felt like something was different about Gu Qingxian from before. Meanwhile, Gu Qingxian was looking at the system screen, and he observed that the system was still there, and the hourglass had restarted, so it looked like he would return to the cultivation world again after a while. Gu Qingxian noted that it was unknown why the monsters in the cultivation world were taking action, and someone wanted to instruct Jiang Yi to trouble him, but the trail had been cut. As Gu Qingxian got surrounded by the system screen, he explained that although the reason was unknown, the war god system seemed to be able to let him enter the cultivation world and the present world, and since it was like that, he should take advantage of that system to prepare for and stop the apocalypse. Outside a certain conference hall in the Changning Federation, People were walking towards an aircraft that had just landed. Old Lai and Su Yi were escorting Jiang Yim, who was crying, and he declared that he wouldn't ever dare do that again and begged them. But they still continued to escort him to enter the aircraft. Su Zuer was also getting into the aircraft, and before getting in, she bid goodbye to Gu Qingxian and stated that they would meet again. Gu Qingxian waved back, and he remarked that Jiang Yi's repercussions were probably going to be worse than his in his previous life. As he watched the aircraft fly away, Gu Qingxian mentioned that he could finally go home and rest and that he had left that little house for so many years, so he kind of misses it. Suddenly, another aircraft hovered over Gu Qingxian, and he was puzzled when he noticed that. The aircraft landed near Gu Qingxian, and he seemed to have recognized it. When the doors opened in front of him, Gu Qingxian identified that it was the 9th Prefecture Nai family's flying shuttle. A man was standing by the door, and he informed that their family's young master was inviting Gu Qingxian to enter and speak with him. 
Gu Qingxin questioned that he and the Nai family's young master don't have relations and asked why he looked for him. The man didn't answer his question and just acknowledged that he was welcome with a grin on his face. Gu Qingxin entered the aircraft, and he followed the man who ushered him towards a room. When Gu Qingxin went inside, he saw the Nai family's young master, who has a bunny girl by his side, and he admitted that he didn't know what President Nai was asking him for. Nai Yun, Changning's elite private high school student council president, was looking at Gu Qingxin's data and he noted that he was a top student. Nai Yun observed that Gu Qingxin had full points on beginning mecha tectonics, photon technology, battleship navigation, and mecha dynamics, and at the same time, he was a distinguished member of the Su family's steel armor tech company. He claimed that an ordinary person could attain those kinds of accomplishments, so even a woman like Su Zuer might feel goodwill towards him. He remarked that, however, every powerful family in the Federation wanted to marry the Su family's Su Zuer, so a person of Gu Qingxin's background shouldn't be tempted by her. With a serious look on his face, Gu Qingxin inquired what would happen if he was tempted. Nai Yun warned that Gu Qingxin's end result would be so terrible that it might even threaten his life. Gu Qingxin wondered if his relationship with Su Zuer would affect those people's interests and if they were the ones who used poison. Nai Yun asked Gu Qingxin what he was going to do. Gu Qingxin suggested that if Nai Yun liked Su Zuer, he could pursue her, but as for what he was going to do, that was his own business, and he wouldn't concern himself with it. Gu Qingxin quickly turned around and started walking away. On the other hand, Nai Yun looked so pissed, but he remained silent. He turned to the man earlier, and as he inquired how the plans were going, the man assured that he should rest assured as everything was arranged. The man grinned evilly as he revealed that within an hour, Gu Qingxin would die in an accident. The city was filled with colorful lights that made it look lively. Meanwhile, in the slums where Gu Qingxin was walking, it was dark and gloomy. Gu Qingxin remarked that there was only one year left before the cultivation world would arrive, so he needed to rely on the system to raise his power as quickly as possible. As he turned the corner, Gu Qingxin noted that aside from facing the apocalypse, he also had to be careful of those malicious wealthy children. In the alleyway, drunk men were walking towards Gu Qingxin, and as one of them started wobbling, the other suggested that he should slow down, but the man insisted that he was fine. Suddenly, the wobbling man, who had an evil look on his face, bumped into Gu Qingxin. The man quickly extended a blade, and as he swung it towards Gu Qingxin, he called him a little brat and asked if he wanted to leave after bumping into him. But Gu Qingxin was able to dodge it, and he exclaimed that it was a fierce blade, so that person was definitely not a normal thug. Gu Qingxin quickly moved away from the blade, and he stated that the man was after him on purpose. The man was surprised when Gu Qingxin suddenly turned towards him. Gu Qingxin managed to get behind the man and hit him at the back of his neck. As the man crashed on the ground, Gu Qingxin noted that his spirit power could be used, and it looked like his cultivation from the cultivation world could be brought back. Pulling out a gun, one of the men remarked that Gu Qingxin wasn't a normal kid, so they should bring him down. Gu Qingxin was surprised that there were even guns, and he observed that they were really not ordinary people. He summoned his bow and arrows and declared that, since it was like that, they shouldn't blame him for being ruthless. The men started firing their guns at Gu Qingxin. Gu Qingxin looked so terrifying as he fired his arrows at the men. The men got taken down one by one as the arrows hit them, and the last one left looked so terrified as he watched an arrow coming at him. The man was not able to react, and he fell to the ground as he got hit by the arrow on his shoulder. Gu Qingxin walked forward, and he walked past the unconscious men on the ground. The man who only got hit on the shoulder was still conscious, and he looked so terrified as he kept pleading that Gu Qingxin should spare him when he saw Gu Qingxin walking towards him. Gu Qingxin pointed an arrow in the man's eyes and demanded who sent him there. The arrow got closer to the man's eyes, so he confessed that the Nai family's fierce tiger was the one who hired them. Gu Qingxin acknowledged that, as expected, it was Nai Yun. The man mentioned that fierce tiger was a martial master, and Gu Qingxin was definitely not his match, so he should run. When he heard about the martial master, Gu Qingxin mused that if he could use his sword skills from his previous life to battle, any opponent wouldn't be a problem. Gu Qingxin suddenly felt a pang of pain, and as he remarked that his head hurt, he wondered why he couldn't remember and asked the system if it was the one that sealed his memories. The system explained that Gu Qingxin has yet to break away from the void's surveillance, and it would be difficult to predict what would occur once discovered. Gu Qingxin inquired the system when he could restore his memories, and the system informed that he needed to transmigrate to the cultivation world one minus two more times. He acknowledged that he could only take one step at a time, and though it failed that time, Nai Yun definitely won't give up, and he will send more people to come after him. Gu Qingxin resolved that since he couldn't use his sword skills, he would use the war god skills that come from the system to go against them. A few moments later, the moon peeked through the cloudy sky above the city. Fierce Tiger was grinning widely as he announced that his arrangements for that night were definitely memorable for Gu Qingxin. 
Gu Qingshan asked the man to confirm if the person who mentioned killing him was called Fierce Tiger, and he added that he wanted to talk to him. The man agreed, and he handed his phone to Gu Qingshan. Gu Qingshan heard Fierce Tiger on the other line ask how it went. Fierce Tiger was agitated when Gu Qingshan informed him that it had failed. Gu Qingshan indicated that he was still alive, and Fierce Tiger noted that he didn't think Gu Qingshan would take the initiative to contact him. But of course, even if he didn't contact him, he would still find him and kill him. Gu Qingshan offered Fierce Tiger a chance and that he should know where he lives. So he would wait for him there. He crushed the phone in his hand. Gu Qingshan remarked that it looked like he needed to get rid of those damn nobles first before preventing the apocalypse, and as he instructed the man to leave, the man was surprised. The man asked Gu Qingshan if he was not going to kill him. Gu Qingshan walked away and mentioned that the man has done all the things he has asked for, so he has won back his life. The man started crying when he heard that. On the other hand, at Changning Casino, someone was talking to Nai Yun and indicated that the chick was their headliner, so they couldn't bear to wager her. The girl looked so uncomfortable while the man requested that Nai Yun give some face and asked him to change the girl. While Nai Yun was asking the man if he decided to offend him because of a headliner, and the man insisted that it was not what he meant, Fierce Tiger was approaching Nai Yun with a dark expression on his face. Fierce Tiger, the personal aide of the Nai family, reported that the task failed, and Gu Qingxin just sent him a provoking message, which surprised Nai Yun. Nai Yun quickly grabbed the chips on the table. He threw them at Fierce Tiger as he demanded to know who was the one who claimed that there wouldn't be a problem. And Fierce Tiger, who was a bit annoyed, apologized to Nai Yun and promised that he would personally get rid of Gu Qingxin. Nai Yun watched as Fierce Tiger walked out, and he grumbled that Gu Qingxin really made people angry. Meanwhile, the girl was trembling behind the man while he politely called Nai Yun. Nai Yun asked the man if they should bet on something more interesting. The man requested that Nai Yun state it. Projecting Gu Qingxin's image, Nai Yun proposed that Fierce Tiger needs to go kill a poor student named Gu Qingxin, and he would bet that Gu Qingxin will definitely die. But the man argued that Fierce Tiger is a martial master and killing a poor student is as easy as lifting a finger, so the gamble doesn't seem to be very fair. Suddenly, the girl behind the man suggested that he should bet with him, and the man asked her what would happen if they lost. The girl said that if they lose, they will kill off all the members of the Nai family, give up on the mission, and return home. She added that she has been sick of that boring place since long ago. On the other hand, a drone was deployed in the air. They were deployed in the slums where Fierce Tiger was. Fierce Tiger was inside a building, and he was walking through a narrow hallway. He went to room number 2207. Fierce Tiger immediately kicked and broke the door. He called Gu Qingxin and announced that he was there. Fierce Tiger entered the dark room and questioned how much longer Gu Qingxin was going to hide. Suddenly, Fierce Tiger noticed something glinting behind him. Fierce Tiger observed that something was coming at him at an incredible speed, and he exclaimed that it was not good. He managed to grab the thing that looked like an arrow to stop it from hitting him. But the arrow's force was so strong that it pushed Fierce Tiger back. Fierce Tiger crashed into the wall, and as he managed to stop the arrow fully, he was surprised when he saw a bow. It was Gu Qingxin who was wielding the bow, and as he came out of the shadows where he was hiding, he remarked that, as expected of a martial master, Fierce Tiger blocked that one arrow. Gu Qingxin released powerful spiritual energy as he prepared for the next arrow. He asked what would happen to the second arrow, and Fierce Tiger braced himself. Gu Qingxin declared that it was the third arrow, and Fierce Tiger managed to duck and dodge the arrow. Gu Qingxin fired multiple shots, and Fierce Tiger managed to dodge all of them. Fierce Tiger hid behind the couch, and he wondered how a poor kid like Gu Qingxin could have such a powerful archery skill. Meanwhile, Nai Yun was watching the building through a projection, and he saw an explosion. The man Nai Yun was betting with exclaimed that Gu Qingxin could actually use a bow to suppress a martial master and asked just who the poor kid was. On the other hand, Nai Yun looked so agitated, and he asked Fierce Tiger what he was doing and demanded that he should go quickly kill Gu Qingxin for him. While Gu Qingxin was preparing another shot, Fierce Tiger heard Nai Yun through comms, and he acknowledged that he understood. Fierce Tiger was astonished when he saw that the arrow Gu Qingxin fired was coming straight at him. His eyes suddenly changed color and veins started popping around them. Fierce Tiger's muscles also bulked up and caused his clothes to rip. His eyes looked so fierce as he glared ahead. Fierce Tiger blocked the arrow, and he managed to break it in half. Gu Qingxin noted that it was his true power and it was a bit interesting. Fierce Tiger looked so terrifying as he charged towards Gu Qingxin at an incredible speed while Gu Qingxin was firing his arrows. Fierce Tiger smiled as he managed to grab Gu Qingxin's arrows. Removing the sharp tip of the arrow, Fierce Tiger grinned evilly, and as he asked Gu Qingxin if his arrows had all been used up, he taunted that it was his turn. Fierce Tiger threw the sharp tips at Gu Qingxin, and Gu Qingxin prepared to dodge them. Gu Qingxin jumped backwards to dodge the attack. He successfully dodged Fierce Tiger's attack by only moving a few inches away from it. 
Fierce Tiger observed that it was a good opportunity, so he charged forward to close the distance between them, and he was about to deliver a punch to Gu Qingshan. Gu Qingshan crossed his arms, and he braced himself to block Fierce Tiger's fist. Fierce Tiger's punch was so powerful that when it connected, dust and debris flew all over the place. While Gu Qingshan punched a hole through the wall as he got pushed back, he immediately removed the pin from his hair. Gu Qingshan acknowledged that the strength was a bit unexpected. The floor shook and cracked as Fierce Tiger walked forward. Fierce Tiger made the hole in the wall bigger as he walked through it, and he proclaimed that Gu Qingshan was dead for sure. Fierce Tiger grabbed the couch and as he was about to throw it at Gu Qingshan, he asked him if he could only hide without his bow. Gu Qingshan raised his hairpin as he glared at Fierce Tiger. As Gu Qingshan managed to dodge Fierce Tiger's attack by jumping in the air, he questioned Fierce Tiger who mentioned that. Gu Qingshan used his hairpin as a blade and swung it at Fierce Tiger, who screamed in pain. He held his bow firmly. Gu Qingshan dug his bow into Fierce Tiger's foot, which made him scream in pain again. He kicked Fierce Tiger in the face. Gu Qingshan's kick was so strong that he sent Fierce Tiger crashing towards the wall, and he stated that he was currently in the second stage of Kai Condensation, so his power was about the same as that of the world's martial master. Gu Qingshan explained that the spiritual power of the cultivation world was stronger than the power of that world, which was the reason why he couldn't suppress Fierce Tiger. Releasing his spiritual power, Gu Qingshan declared that he doesn't have time to tangle with Fierce Tiger anymore, so the deathmatch should end. Fierce Tiger grabbed a huge chunk of concrete, and as he was about to attack Gu Qingshan with it, he announced that he wouldn't give Gu Qingshan the chance to make his move. He threw the concrete towards Gu Qingshan, but Gu Qingshan managed to jump and dodge it. The system notified Gu Qingshan that he was using the skill secure as he pulled on his bow with three arrows made of spiritual power arrows in them. Gu Qingshan released the arrows, and the system notified him that he was using the skill, the consecutive shooting. As the arrows charged towards Fierce Tiger, it materialized into a huge snake. Fierce Tiger was surprised by what he saw, and he looked terrified. The three arrows hit Fierce Tiger in his torso, and he also got pushed into the wall, which crumbled immediately. Fierce Tiger coughed up blood as he lost his balance and consciousness. He fell out of the building and crashed into the ground. The drone was filming outside while the dust and debris of the fight were coming out of the hole. Gu Qingshan stood over the edge of the wall as the dust dissipated. He glared ahead of him. Gu Qingshan saw the drone that was flying in front of him. The drone seemed to have noticed something, as it was startled. It saw that Gu Qingshan was aiming his arrow at it. Gu Qingshan released the arrow, and the tip of the arrow was the last thing the drone recorded before everything went dark. On the other hand, Nai Yun looked so terrified by what he saw. The man politely called Nai Yun and mentioned that his mood was not good, so they should call off that gamble. Nai Yun looked so pissed when he heard what the man remarked, and he asked the man if he implied that he, Nai Yun, could not afford to lose. He quickly turned and walked away, and he commented that the man was lucky that time around, but he wouldn't be so lucky next time, so they were leaving. The man was startled when the girl suddenly stood up and remarked that Nai Yun was a guy who didn't know how high the sky was or how thick the ground was, and asked if he didn't know that he had lost the gamble but saved his own life. The man, who was the first guard of the eldest princess, was top hacker Feng Huod. He bowed to the eldest princess of the Sun, Rulanka Empire, the queen of the apocalypse, Anna Medici, politely addressed her and noted that they had come to the Free Federation to search for talents, so he requested that she restrain herself during the mission, and Anna Medici responded that hiding her identity was really a troublesome thing. Anna Medici suggested that they should not talk about that anymore and asked Feng Huod what he thought of the strength of Gu Qingshan. Feng Huod assessed that Gu Qingshan's strength was ordinary, barely above that of a martial master. However, his way of fighting was very unique, and he inquired if Gu Qingshan had some kind of unknown ability. Anna Medici suggested that they should search for Gu Qingshan's data. Feng Huod agreed, and as he was projecting something, he commented that it was truly a trash firewall system, so the Free Federation was too uncaring of its talents. They were looking at Gu Qingshan's file, and Feng Huod noted that Gu Qingshan was actually also a mecha researcher. Anna Medici remarked that it was a bit Bit interesting, so it looked like they needed to find a way to get close to Gu Qingshan. Meanwhile, Gu Qingshan was walking towards the Changning Metal Battle Armor R&D department. Gu Qingshan walked up the set of stairs to reach the huge entrance to the building. As Gu Qingshan stood by the entrance, multiple machines scanned him, and as the machines confirmed that the iris scan was complete, they welcomed Gu Qingshan and called him serial number 41157. Gu Qingshan took a step forward to enter the building. He went inside, and it looked like a huge laboratory. Gu Qingshan continued walking, and he was approaching a huge robot where two men were working. 
Looking at the robot, Gu Qingxin remarked that in his previous life, before he transmigrated, the mecha technology was a lot better than it currently is. Gu Qingxin noted that if he could take advantage of that mecha technology to design stranger mecha armor, it would be helpful in countering the apocalypse. He mentioned that those technologies were all in his head, so he should confirm them afterwards. Gu Qingxin entered the residential area, and as he walked down the hallway, he wondered if the people of the Nai family wouldn't bother him for a while if he hid in there. He placed his palm on a huge screen, and the screen confirmed that his identity was verified and welcomed him back. Gu Qingxin entered an expensive-looking room, and he immediately removed his coat. He placed his coat on the bed and continued to walk towards the window. Looking through the window, Gu Qingxin observed that there were strands of gas from the underworld in the air. Gu Qingxin noted that it looked like the signs of the apocalypse had already appeared, so he didn't have much time left. He decided that he would return to the cultivation world again the next day and use the time left to train his cultivation. Gu Qingxin sat on his bed and started meditating. He furrowed his brows as he tried to concentrate. Suddenly, the system appeared, and it notified Gu Qingxin that he had stayed in the present world for 24 hours, so he would return to the cultivation world. Gu Qingxin was startled when he came back to the cultivation world, and the subordinate asked him if he was alright and what he was spacing out for. Gu Qingxin explained that it looked like his time in the cultivation world would stop after he returned to the present world, and he noted that he had returned again.